Okay, so welcome to part three of simply building a sales process for an agency. And just to recap from the previous video and the previous, so the first episode was all about the offer, foundation, niche, and all that. And then part two, the previous video, it was more about attention to booked calls, like how to first of all generate attention and how to convert that attention into actually booked calls in your calendar where you can sort of pitch and obviously sell your services. Um, so if you haven't watched that already, go back and watch that because this won't make sense otherwise. And I also just want to explain how you really make this shit work because it's easy or no, I shouldn't say it's easy. I'd say there are usually two different types of paradigms when it comes to appointment booking. Some people just prefer brute volume and just leave it like that and just let the sales rep suffer because they have to take every single call and that's it. Other might say we only want to do quality. Um, so they only like book, they, they pay very, very much, like pay a lot for every single call. They get obviously fewer calls because they can't afford to spend a shit ton of money on only calls, which means they have fewer calls, but the calls they actually have are more qualified and they have a clo higher close rate. Now, both of those somewhat works, but the thing is, there is a way to do both. You can get a high volume of qualified prospects for not insanely much money if you actually do it in the right way. Because if you just follow the part two that I mentioned in the last video, you're going to learn how to get the volume. In this video, I'm going to teach you exactly how to get the quality out of the volume. Because yeah, the the right way, like you can really, really make it rain when you're able to sort of combine those two th thought patterns. The volume with the quality, because obviously it makes sense. Like you have more high quality appointments. That's just simply it. So yeah, this is what this will be about. And we call it part three, seven figure nurturing process. And first of all, let me just actually move around some stuff. Um, so this will actually make sense. But yeah, so firstly, I was, we go over everything in a second. But firstly, I would just explain this top one right here like this. Um, it's pretty annoying that these are now. Uh, oh, yeah, let, there we go. I can actually move them apart. So make it easier. So Let's just focus on this right here. This is a normal sales process. This is probably what you're doing right now. If you are even booking any form of calls, uh, this is probably how that looks like. So the normal sales process is it's really shit, spoiler alert. So whatever thing you're doing to book appointments, it can be a referral, it can be a um, cold outreach, such as cold DM, cold calling, cold DMs, cold SMS, uh, it can be paid ads, it can, it can literally be anything. So on day zero, the prospect you now uh, have reached out to or gotten attention from, they go in and book a call. They find your booking link and book if pick a time spot and they simply book a call. That's that. Now, most of the time people book, I don't know, they, let's say this prospect specifically was busy the day after and the day after that again, or let's say this is on a Friday. So Saturday and Sunday, they book a call for Monday, let's say. So in, in three days time, they will have a call. Now, the agency this prospect is booking with don't have a systemized and leveraged seven figure nurturing process, which means nothing really happens during this time. Like the call gets booked, they might get a calendar confirmation or an invite on their email, but nothing else, like nothing really happens between this time. So since little, so let's say, let's, let's just imagine you do cold outreach, like Literally, the only thing the prospect now knows about you and your agency is from the messaging you've sent them. So you maybe sent them a short pitch, like you branch an offer, they say, hey, why not? Let's set up a call. You send them a booking link. That's the only thing they know about you. So they've only seen your message on, I don't know, LinkedIn, wherever. They have checked out your Canly booking page and booked a call. Now, if you just like position yourself as the prospect, would you even consider something on a first call to buy that, like the service on that first call, if that's the only thing you know about the company? I hope you're saying no, because the reason people buy is simply because of trust. If, they, if, if your prospect doesn't trust you, they will never book a call, especially when it comes to like online services. Like it's the wild west. Like, I'm sure you're like, have, you might even experience this yourself. Like you buy something online. It's not what you expected at all. 
it's super such a hassle to get a refund and don't even like mention suing someone because we all know that doesn't work on overseas different countries all that so it's already like sketchy area so for someone to like consider buying something of you online trust needs to be there and again if you just go back to now what this prospect knows about you and your agency how much trust do you really think there is when they've only seen your outreach message and booked a call through your booking link not really much which means that this, this call one here is probably going to first of all be a low show rate because the thing is if people don't trust you if they don't know who you are the time for the appointment might show up uh, come up and they're like yeah you know what i don't really remember why i booked this call in the first place i got other shit to do let me just not show up so that's the first issue you have like you're gonna have a shit show rate with this now if you are lucky let's just say best case scenario they actually show up you're lucky then all right we, let's say they show up so Let's say you have a fucking, I don't know, 30% show rate with this. So like you need to book 10 calls to get three shows. Really bad. But yeah, you, you, you are lucky. So this one call shows up right here. Now, again, even though they now showed up, they don't trust you at all because they know nothing about you, which means you're going to have to spend this entire call, let's say one hour or even more to talk to them, build report, build this trust with them for even, again, for even them to, to consider that you you will be an option and they will buy from you all right and now because they don't trust you you will gonna you will going to have to book a follow-up call because this process right here will have something else scheduled you might have another meeting or another sales call now there's something else to go to so let's say you book that for the next day again since they don't really trust you you they only sort of like known you now for one hour they've spoken to you for one hour on over a google meet or zoom meeting now when you book the follow-up call the show rate is going to be even lower because now like now they sort of know a little bit more about the offer and usually when booking follow-up calls it's just yeah it's a shit show like people don't really consider like generally they don't people don't show up to follow-up calls that's the first thing like don't, I try to avoid it at all costs but if you have to you need to actually make sure they're actually committed and willing to show up but so that's the first thing like again because they don't trust you very much you're going to book a follow-up call and we should follow call one they're not going to sh probably show up but again consider best case scenario they show up you need to spend another hour because again they've only known you for one hour up until this point which means you need to now spend even more time to convince them and get to know them and build this trust they actually are willing to move forward with you and buy your services now since again it's only two hours that's not real. like let's say you've known friends for like if you just count the hours you've hung out with different friends that's going to be a lot like imagine buying something something for multiple thousands of dollars online like two hours is usually not enough for someone to just say all right let's fuck it let's do it so you need to book a, a second follow-up call, which again has an even lower show rate. So it's just a downward spiral with like more like, and the thing not, like we haven't even mentioned the time you are wasting on this prospect sitting here and booking, first of all, talk to them for an hour, booking in the follow-up calls, booking that, taking actually a spot in your calendar for that follow-up call, then not even showing up probably to that call. There's just so much shit show with this sales process, but we're going to continue because yeah, I'm just going to show you how shit this is. So yeah, the follow-up call too. let's say they weren't available the, the following day. So you might book and for two days in advance. And the thing is, this can go on for weeks. Like a lot of people, they might want to book a follow-up call in a week, which means this process drags out even longer. Your show rate is going to be even shittier and it's going to take so long for you to even be remotely close to even close a client. So let's say on the follow-up call too, it's the same thing. They want to talk even more and more and more because they want to know you better. You book a follow-up call three. And the thing is, yeah, again, I keep mentioning it, even lower show rate this time. So eventually after four hours of you sitting there and talking to someone, and the thing is, we're now talking from best case scenario, best case scenario, this project now shows up on every single call. And then eventually you might get a close if you're lucky. Like if we just consider this from best case scenario, you're, you're putting four hours of your manual time into closing this prospect, which you might say, fair enough, I'll tell you that. But again, it's the best case scenario. This only might happen like one out of 10 times, which means you have to spend 40 hours, 40 hours on sales calls to make this happen. I hope you can understand how that's not very productive. And then that is very, a very non leveraged way of doing this. But don't worry, I got you. I can show you. Now we're going over how to not do things. 
let's go how to actually do things. So as I said, just before we go on, like the reason you even need to stay for these, these calls so long and have multiple calls is because of trust. That's the main thing. If you, let's say if you had a friend who was in your ideal, ideal niche and you have a great offer, it would probably be not super hard to convince that person, your friend, as long as it's a good friend and they actually like you, to buy your service and buy your offer, if it's a good offer. I hope you can understand that. Which means, again, if they trust you, they're going to buy for you. That's your whole goal. And again, the reason you need to sit there for this long time is because trust is usually built by quality time, like proving something, proving you're a decent person over enough time. So with that in mind, Let's take a look at the leveraged sales process, which as you can see, first of all, is way fucking shorter, which is obviously good, but there are more steps in this. So let me just actually move this a little bit down so you can just really compare them side to side. Um, so let's just focus on this for now. The leveraged sales process. So now as like, let's say the same agency, the same thing happens really, like they have the same prospect, books a call on day zero, and the call is going to occur on day three. Now, literally the only difference here, as you can see, is our sales assets that are taking place between day zero and day three. And let me explain what that is. So let's say, or this is, this is let's say the uh, um, process we teach our clients and help them with setting up themselves. So let's just imagine now the same premise you Let's say, yeah, a cold DM through LinkedIn. That's what you're sending or a set of does. You, you, they see the outreach message. They get the booking link. They go into your booking link, books a call. Now here's the difference. Now up to those points, everything's exactly different, if, if, exactly the same, but now here's the difference. So instead of nothing happen during this day one and day two and day zero, really, this leverage sales process now incurs so much more. So what happens when someone books a call, the process books a call, immediately after that, they get redirected from the booking page through a sort of thank you page. On that thank you page is first of all, a thank you video, which is done by you, the founder, explaining, saying, hey, I appreciate you booking a call. You can prepare them for the call, mentioning what you require from them, what they might need to prepare before the call, tell them to sit in a quiet place, like uh, include all the decision makers, just to make that easier for you. That's already such a huge win and bonus because now you've actually shown your face to them. They can put out, they know who you are. You can introduce yourself. That already builds so much more trust. And again, you can leverage this to get them to do what you want. Because if you simply ask them to do things that helps you out, most people are going to do it. That's the first thing. So thank you, video is really good. On this same thank you page, you can include so much else. Like, again, I'm keep saying it over again, but it's it's about trust. So how do you build trust? By you showing you are an authority in the market. How do you do that? You, let's say videos like this, YouTube videos, content, really. And the more people can see you online, the more trust you're gonna have. Let's say if you, let's say if, if um, I don't know, a super famous person, I'm trying to think of someone I can, uh, yeah, fuck that. Let's just say a super famous person reaches out to you from their like verified Instagram account on Instagram and say, hey, do you want to collaborate on this new um, business idea I have compared to an account with zero followers that you don't know reaching out to you and saying the same thing? Who would you most likely respond to? Obviously the famous person, which means the more people know you, the more you are out there, the more content you have and can show people, the more they're going to trust you. And you can put that all on the thank you page. So just get people to show that. And again, let's say you have an automation so that the first thing, like basically you can show everything on this thank you page, but the reality is like ideally someone books a call, get to the thank you page, watch the video. They can scroll, they can check your case studies, testimonials, content, because another thing that obviously builds trust is like showing you, you showing client results. If you can show you've done this for before for other people, just like themselves, they're going to get more, uh, believe in you more that you can actually do this for them. Um, and let's say you can have this all in the thank you page, but the th reality is, Prospects might be busy. They might not have the time to go through that whole page immediately, which means they might just only watch the thank you video and continue. But that's fine because you have, again, the leveraged sales process. So we have automations in place, which means 
even though it's now it's two days between these two days, like they now they first see the thank you video and the thank, thank you page, which is already a massive upgrade from the normal sales process. Now, or let's say, I don't know, two hours after that, you send an automatic email to them. Hey, by the way, he, here are some case studies. Please check this out before our call. Um, yeah, and now you send them case studies. You can show them, hey, this is what we've done for a similar brand like you, similar business like you. We help them go from this to this and this amount of time. And then you're just talking about how good of an experience they had with you. Same with testimonials. Like you might send another email a couple hours after that. Hey, here are some video testimonials from our happy clients. And again, if you can show people in their niche that are just like them, talking good about you and your business, that's obviously going to help so much. Same with content, as I said, you can so show like, hey, by the way, here is my YouTube channel. You can go here and check out what, how we are helping businesses like you do this, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you can also tell them, hey, um, here's my LinkedIn, here's my Instagram, on my Twitter, wherever you post, and then also show your client results. Because the thing is now, that's the, the really funny part with all this, because you, remember I mentioned, like, first of all, you build trust by spending time with someone and showing you can do what you actually want to um, tell them you can do. And you can show them that you know what you talk about and are authority in the market by um, case studies, testimonials, and content. No, not content, client results. But the funny thing with content is that, remember how I said, you're now putting all this time into these calls to build trust. That's sort of what content does as well. But here's the catch, it's done on an autopilot, like automatically. Because let's say, let's say you have booked a call with us, if you're an agency owner, booked a call with us, I don't know, from an ad, you might maybe found me on YouTube, or you booked, an, you booked a call from an ad, and now you get funneled into my YouTube and watch this before the call. Now, I don't know how, this, how long this video has been, but if you just take at the time now, how much you watch this video, you have literally just spent that amount of time hang, sort of hanging out with me. And that is time. And the thing is, I'm sitting here in my office recording this once and I can just use this video and have, I don't, like, I don't get too many views, but let's just say I get 200, 300 views. Like if I make an hour long video, that get 200 views. That's like me hanging out personally with each prospect 200 times or 200 hours. But I just instead of spend an hour recording a video once. So obviously that's way, way more leveraged. And that's the funny thing. Like the more I can get my prospects to watch my content before our calls, the more they're going to trust us and the more value I provide to them, such as this, they can see, hey, this guy actually seems to know what he's talking about. It actually makes sense. I like this guy because I'm a great guy overall. I know like you don't have to say that twice, but that's the, the beauty of everything. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's literally it. Like you don't, and sales assets is just everything like this. Sales assets is something you can create once and use over and over and over and over again to build trust with your prospects before they call. And obviously, this means that now when we approach time, like day three, when the calls to take place, and again, this isn't done on autopilot. You don't have to do this manually. You can set this up probably with your booking page, no, no booking platform, booking link, and all that. So you can be sent out automatically. Now, when this prospect now is going to probably show up. Yeah, like, I mean, when, when day three comes, they call one, the, the show is going to be so much higher because they now actually trust us. They remember why they booked the call and they understand that we can actually help them. The show rate is going to be high and it's a very high likelihood we're able to close them on that one call because again, if they have watched all my content and all these different sales ads beforehand, they'll build trust and they're way more ready to move forward and buy immediately. So I hope you now can understand why you want to do like this and not like this. And again, this is how you combine volume with quality because with paid ads and let's say everything we did in here, you can get a lot of high volume. Like that's the thing. But if you combine it with this, you can turn that volume into quality, which is such like it's a sheet code simply. Um, and yeah, just to briefly explain here some and uh, there's not, let's just actually not call that. That's a, we call it previous back in VSL. Let's just call this thank you video. Here's just some examples, like a thank you video. This is what we had previously. We have a new one new act now actually, but this is what happens when someone lands on our booking, uh, after booking a call, they land here. And uh, social proof plus sales assets. So this is our previous funnel. People can go there, learn some more. My YouTube channel, people can, could go there, learn some more. Instagram had a bunch of client results or still have on my Instagram, which means people can see that before they call. Again, 
more trust, more warm. They can check out my LinkedIn, for example, see my content there. So yeah, I mean, just some examples. Just have a bunch of shit up and running and send that out to them before they call. And one last thing I want to give you before really ending this. Uh, again, I don't have no idea how long this video has been. Not super long, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, we, we are like simply, um, you need to create a new appointment SOP because even though this is great, and by the way, as I said, you can automate all this through your um, like booking platform. We use Calendly. So we have all this set up in the sort of the reminders. We usually just push everyone to go to the thank you page because on that, on there, we can list all of this. Sometimes we send out it um, like smaller case studies manually in the inside the reminder. And I re by the way, I recommend you have like a reminder 24 hours before, both on email and text. Then you have um, six hours before or four hours and then one hour and then 10 minutes. And in all of these, you can insert a link like, hey, by the way, make sure you go to the thank you page and watch the thank you video. Or you can put testimonials, you can put um, link your con like channel, social media channels in there to get them to watch your content and all that stuff. That's what I recommend. And also before every single call, you or the sales rep you have that's going to take the calls need to be reaching out to every single prospect before the call. Because this is first of all going to increase show rate massively. And again, increase report, build trust and just make it easy for you to close. And you don't have to make this very advanced. It's super simple. So first of all, what you do every single time a new appointment gets uh, booked, as soon as possible, you want to call them. And if you can't reach them over the phone, text the new booking uh, until you get in touch. You just want to know them because the thing is, you want to know it's an actual good fit. You want to know you can actually help them. And if not, you just cancel the call and move on. And if it is a good fit, you build a report and also make sure it's a good fit, as I just said. So that's very simple. But again, what, do that for every single call and just watch how your sales will skyrocket. And don't like do this low effort, like call them once and just leave it. No, call them and then text them. If they answer on text, awesome, have a text conversation. If they haven't answered on either, you call them the next day again and just repeat that until you actually get a hold of them. So that's how you do that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's literally it. Like, this is how you actually create a nurturing process. And again, this is part of the, yeah, nurturing process. You just sort of combine with the inbound because again, the bigger inbound stuff you have, the bigger social media channels you have, the more inbound you have, the more they will get nurtured even though they're booked through the cold, um, cold outbound simply. Um, but yeah, and then in the next video, we're going to talk more about even the content machine, as we call it inbound more and more about how to actually create content on autopilot don't have to waste too much time it takes a couple like a couple hours per week only to create a shit ton of content. And that's really good. Um, but yeah, until then. Yeah, let's watch some other my YouTube videos. They're really great. And um, hopefully talk to you soon. And again, as I keep forgetting to mention, if you are an agency owner and want to learn or want to simply sign up more clients, book more calls, there is a link in the top description down below where it's a link to our sales funnel. We have something to sell you if you're an agency owner, but don't worry, only if you're a good fit. We have something for everyone. We have something for bigger agencies done for you. We have something for smaller agencies done with you. Um, book a call. We can see if it's a good fit. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you there.